I uh, think uh, thank from uh, New Hampshire has been a great leader on this. Well, let me just tell my colleagues what drives my thinking here. I think we're at war. I don't think it. I believe it. Uh, I hope you believe it too. And I hope you believe America is part of the battlefield because this is what the enemy would like to do is destroy our country. Uh, if you capture an al-Qaeda operative overseas, does anybody in this body suggest that we should give them a lawyer or read them their rights? In, in World War II, if you captured a Nazi prisoner, a Nazi soldier overseas, and you started saying you have the right to remain silent and give you, give you a lawyer, even though Miranda didn't exist at the time, people would run you out of town. So if you believe you can kill an American citizen who's joined al-Qaeda, uh, the Alakwi case, where the President of the United States made an executive decision under the rule of law, not through a court decision, to target an American citizen who had lined themselves with the enemy, uh, then if you can kill them, which is pretty indefinite, why can't you capture and hold them? Now, that would be the dumbest thing in the history of the world for a nation to say, <coughs> we, we all acknowledge the executive branch's power to target an American citizen who has aligned themselves with the enemy, and we can kill them overseas, we can capture them overseas, we can interrogate them about what they know about future attacks, but when they get here, you've got to treat them as a common criminal. I think what we share, the senator from New Hampshire, is that we think al-Qaeda operatives, citizens or not, are not common criminals. We think they're crazy people. Warriors bent on our destruction who would blow themselves up just as quickly as they would blow you up, and they don't care if they blow themselves up. And the only reason the Christmas Day bomber didn't kill a bunch of people is his shoe didn't go off. The only reason the Times Square bomber didn't kill a bunch of people is because the bomb didn't go off. If you're an American citizen and you want to help al-Qaeda kill Americans and destroy your own country, here's what's coming your way. And if you happen to be listening to this debate, please understand the law as it is today and is going to be after the, this bill is passed. We're at war. The authorization to use military force passed by the Congress right after the attacks against this nation designates al-Qaeda as a military threat, not a common criminal threat, so we apply the law of war. There are two legal systems at play here. Domestic criminal law, that's well serves us as a nation to deal with crime. Even the worst person, the worst child abuser, gets a lawyer and is presumed innocent. Believe it or not, war criminals get lawyers and are presumed innocent. I'm proud of both systems, but the law enforcement model doesn't allow you to hold someone for a period of time to gather intelligence. Under the law enforcement model, the one, once you capture someone, you have to start reading them their rights and providing them a lawyer. Under the law of war model, you can hold someone who's part of the enemy force and gather intelligence. And this is not the first war where American citizens have sided with the enemy. The N. Ray Curran case, a World War II case where American citizens aided Nazi saboteurs. And here's what the court said. There is no bar to the nations holding one of its own citizens as enemy combatant. That's been the law for decades. So if it made sense to hold an American citizen who was helping the Nazis under military authority because they're helping a military enemy of the nation to gather intelligence, why in the world wouldn't it make sense to hold somebody who's joined with al-Qaeda to gather intelligence about the next attack? And let me give you an example of what we may face. Homegrown terrorism is on the rise. The internet is out there. It's a good thing and a bad thing. But the idea of people getting radicalized and turning against our own country is a growing threat. So the likelihood of, in the future of someone getting radicalized, an American citizen here at home, going to Pakistan, uh, getting educated in one of these extreme madrasas, coming back home, getting off the plane at Dulles Airport, coming down to the mall and start shooting American citizens and tourists alike is very real. And what this legislation does, it says from the Congress's point of view that we recognize the person who is aligned with al-Qaeda is not a common criminal, that we expressly authorize the indefinite detention of someone who's joined al-Qaeda operations. And why is that important? Don't you think most American senator would be offended that if after the person was captured who went on a rampage in the Capitol to kill American citizens, 
uh, to, to, kill, to kill people in America that you couldn't question them about, is there somebody else coming? You'd have to say you have the right to remain silent. Here's your lawyer. What we should do with that person who went to Pakistan and got radicalized, who wants to come back here and kill us all, is hold them in military custody like we've done in every other war and find out all we can about future attacks and what they know because we're not fighting a crime, we're fighting a war. That's been the law according to the Supreme Court, for decades. And all we're doing here in Congress is saying statutorily, we recognize the authority of this president and every other president to hold an enemy combatant for intelligence gathering purposes indefinitely, whether they're captured at home or abroad, because that only makes logical sense. And the idea of criminalizing the war and not being able to gather intelligence will put our country at risk and let me say this about the system. No one can be held as an enemy combatant under the law that we've constructed without having their day in federal court. So don't worry about going to a Tea Party or a MoveOn.org rally or Occupy Wall Street rally and somebody holding you as a political prisoner under this law. The only people that can be held under military custody for an indefinite period are ones who have found to have associated with Al-Qaeda in an overt way, and the government has to prove that to a federal judge, and if the federal judge doesn't believe the government has made their case, the person is released. If the federal judge says to the United States government, you have convinced me that the person in front of me is cooperating and has joined Al-Qaeda and is overtly engaged in hostilities against the United States, I hereby authorize you to hold that person to gather intelligence. How long can you hold them? As long as it takes to make us safe. And here's what the law does. Every year, the person being held as an enemy combatant has an annual review process where the experts in our government look at the threat this person possesses, whether or not you have an intelligence, uh, uh, more intelligence to be obtained, and there's a legal process to review ongoing detention. And here's what some of my colleagues would say. Wait a minute, you can't do that. We're going to say as a member of Congress, at an artificial date, you've got to let that person go or try them. A lot of these cases will be based on intelligence that may not go to an Article III court. We may have to compromise our national security. We can prove to a judge or a member of Al-Qaeda, but we're not going to take you to the criminal court because that's not in our national security interest. The key fact here is no one's held as an enemy combatant without judicial review. And once you're determined to be an enemy combatant, we're going to apply the law of war like we have for 200 years. And the law of war says that no nation has to let an any pr enemy prisoner go or prosecute them. Because we're not fighting a crime, we're fighting a war. And if you're an Al-Qaeda operative, you can get killed even if you're an American citizen by assisting the enemy at home or abroad. So don't join Al-Qaeda because you could lose your life. And if you do get captured, you can be held indefinitely under the law of war because you've committed an act of war. With the senator from South Carolina, you Please. for a question. Uh, isn't it true that included within the defense authorization language, detainee provisions, is that nothing in this section is intended to limit or expand the authority of the president or the scope of the authorization for use of military force. In other words, what is the law today, as you just described it, uh, we are reaffirming in this bill, but we are not adding or subtracting from the president's authority he has as the commander in chief of our country to protect our country against members of Al-Qaeda. But here's what we are doing, you're correct. Here's what Lindsey Graham's doing, Carl Levin, and a overwhelming body of uh, members of the body is about to do. We're about to pass a defense authorization bill that increases military pay that has a lot of great things. But we're about to say, as a Congress, we believe we're at war, and we reject the idea, the libertarian idea, who are great Americans, that if you get to America, somehow it's no longer a war. That I think the libertarians agree that if you catch an al-Qaeda operative, including an American citizen overseas, you don't have to read them their rights, and you don't have to give them a lawyer. But somehow, the perverse logic is that if you make it to America to attack us, whether you're a citizen or not, somehow you get a special deal. All of us who are voting for this bill say, that's crazy. We're at war. 
No other war has that been the case. If you had suggested in 1942 that the American citizens helping the Nazis commit sabotage against the United States had a special status and could not be treated in the fashion of a military threat to the country, they would have run you out of town. So we're 10 years out from the attacks of 9-11, and here's what we're rejecting. We're rejecting the criminalization of the war, but we're doing it in a smart way. We're not telling the executive branch, you have to go into a uh, law of war detention system. We're just saying that's available to you. We're not telling the executive branch that you have to try people in military commissions. We're just saying to you that's available for non-citizens. What we're telling the executive branch is that we believe we're at war, and that narrow group of people, thank God they're narrow, who join Al-Qaeda do not have special privileges when it comes to destroying our homeland. That if you make it to America, the closer you get to us, the more tools we should have available to protect ourselves. So we're on record, at least I am, and I think the body as a whole, Senator Levin has been terrific, the administration has been great to work with. Finally, after 10 years, the Congress of the United States, through this legislation, is going to make the, simple prop make the simple statement, simple proposition, that under the law of war, you can be held as an enemy combatant indefinitely to protect this nation because when you join Al-Qaeda, the enemy of us all, we're not worried about how we're going to prosecute you right away. We're worried about what you know about the next attack coming. And let me tell you why we need this flexibility. The Christmas Day bomber, the bomb didn't go off, thank God, it was just luck. Was read his Miranda rights within 45 minutes. Five weeks later, his parents convinced him to cooperate. What we're suggesting is that there's another way that's been used in other wars. That the United States intelligence community, law enforcement community, and military have an option available to you. You could grab this person who's just tried to blow up an airplane over Detroit, American citizen or not, you can hold them without telling them they've got a right to a lawyer and reading the Miranda rights because you're trying to find out is another airplane coming and what do you know about the enemy and what were you up to and where did you train? If we take that option off the table, we'll have diminished our national security, we'll have overturned what every other uh, time of war has been about. We would be the first Congress in the history of the country to reject the idea that you can hold someone who's collaborating with the enemy under the law of war. Let's reverse this. This is the first time in history People have said on the floor of the United States Senate, we reject the Supreme Court holdings that allow the American government to hold someone as an enemy combatant when they've joined the enemy forces at home or abroad. So those of us who are voting for this, we're saying we accept the proposition that if you join Al-Qaeda, you can be killed, you can be captured, you can be interrogated. And I'm willing to accept the heat for making that decision. Because if you can't kill them, and you can't capture them, and you can't interrogate them, we made a huge mistake. Because these people hate us. They hate who we are. They hate what we stand for. And they would kill us all if they could. And they're out there. And some of them are among us who have the title of American citizen. But let me tell you about that title. Not only does it have rights, it has responsibilities. And our courts have said there's nothing in our law or our Constitution prevents us from holding one of our own when they join the enemy. Because when you join the enemy, you have not committed a crime. You have turned on the rest of us. And you should accept the consequences of being at war with America. And being at war with America is something you should fear. And if you don't fear being at war with America, we've made a huge mistake. I believe in due process. No one is going to prison without a federal judge's oversight. No one stays in prison indefinitely without an annual review. 
but my God, we're not going to arbitrarily say you got to go. You got to be let go because of the passage of time, and we're not going to criminalize this war because it is a war. And as sure as I'm standing here talking today, we're going to be wrong once. We have to be right every time, Senator. And we've been lucky, and our men and women in uniform and our intelligence community and our FBI agents are doing a wonderful job. They're working night and day to protect us, and the threats are growing. They're not lessening. And they'll come a day, I'm sad to say, when we're going to get hit again. But when that day comes, we're going to make sure we have the tools to deal with it in terms of what it really is, an act of war. And we're going to have the tools available to this country to rein in the consequences because we're going to have the tools available to find out where is the next tack coming from. We're not going to criminalize the war. We're going to fight it within our values. We're going to provide robust due process. But we're going to acknowledge as a body here in Congress that our chief executive and those men and women in uniform law enforcement agents, CIA agents, that you have our blessing to do your job, and we're going to acknowledge that you have the tools available in this war that were available to other like people in other wars. Because, ladies and gentlemen, if there was ever a war where it was important to know what the enemy was up to and hit them before they hit you, it's this war because they could care less about losing their lives. And the only way we'll be safe is to gather intelligence. And you can't gather intelligence, in my view, by locking America down to dragnet standards. This is not a TV show. This is a real world event that changes as I speak. So to Senator Levin, Senator Ayotte, and to all of those who have tried to create a compromise to enjoy bipartisan support to the administration, thank you all. To the critics, some of your criticism has been unfounded, but you have the right to be a critic. You live in the state called Live Free and Die. Let me remind everybody, being a critic and being able to speak your mind, sometimes people have to die. And the, what the time I'm for the senator in... Um, from New Hampshire has expired. Can I ask for 30 seconds? I'll is just, there any objection? Uh, reserving the right to object, and I, of course, won't. How much time is left before our vote? One minute. I do this in the 15 seconds. Senator would save me 30 seconds. I'd appreciate it. Absolutely. This idea Without of objection. civil liberties and the American way of life, if we don't fight for it, we're going to lose it and we're under siege and we're under attack, so let's fight back within our values. This bill allows us to fight back, and I am very proud of the product. Thank you, Senator Levin, for being such a good leader for the nation at a time when we need good leaders. That I yield.